Our final guest this evening was the recipient of the Logue Family Trustee Scholarship for military students in the World Campus. Tob Vanette served in Iraq with the U.S. Marine Corps. In 2012, Todd graduated from Penn State with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Energy and Sustainability Policy through the World Campus. Todd, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, sure. No problem. You spent nearly 10 years in the U.S. Marines and left the service as a decorated disabled veteran. That's not something you focus much on, your injury. But tell us, if you would, a little bit about your story. Um, I, I, uh, I uh, enrolled, or I, I joined the Marine Corps in, in 2001 after 9-11, you know, a pretty patriotic uh, symbol. And uh, I'd spent some time uh, in Iraq, and I became disabled in combat operations. And um, ultimately, uh, after that had happened, I had to make a decision about what I wanted to do. And while you know, evaluating my options, I, uh, I sat down with my wife and we decided that going back to school was the best thing I could possibly do for myself. You know, I, I couldn't play in the dirt forever. And, uh, and we should say wife and three kids. That's four because, kids. That four, four now, kids. but at the time you had three kids. That's right. That's correct. <laughs> so you had a full plate uh, yeah, and definitely. not much of a nest egg. No, I mean, when you get disabled or when you get uh, injured in combat, the, the problem is there's, there's, there's quite a lengthy process before, you know, any type of retirement or compensation comes. So when you go back to school, you have to really, really work at, at handling your expenses and to try to balance a, a, a budget with your family and go to school. So it was, you know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty tough nut to crack. So ultimately, um, I ended up going to Penn State and uh, while student loans were, were great, I, you know, I just came up a little bit short. And uh, the Logue family awarded me a scholarship uh, for my final two years. And uh, it was literally the difference between being able to finish or having to postpone my graduation. And uh, without it, I wouldn't have been able to graduate. So that was a, a really, really meaningful thing for me. And, and, and it was really significant in my process. Well, I, I want to say, first of all, you're the first member of your family to get a college degree. But before I go any further with that, I read in a blog that you created for your coursework in, in your online program. And you say that the Penn State World Campus really took a chance on you. Because when you were in your teens and when you were in your early 20s, you took college classes at community colleges uh, on and off. You sort of bounced around. Yeah. And out of 100 and, or out of 80 credits, you actually earned 14. Yeah. That, that's a true statistic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ultimately, uh, I, I, my results were underwhelming, to say the least. <laughs> Um, so, so I applied to Penn State, and, and ultimately I get rejected twice. So then, I, I so I call the admissions office. You know, I'm, I'm pleading my case, and I talk to this sweet lady, and I still remember her name, Betty McKinley, in admissions. And I and I said, Betty, I said, I'll do whatever it takes to go to school here. It means a lot to me, and uh, you know, you won't regret your decision. She says, Well, Todd, we, we can't let you in the front door, but I'm going to let you in the side. <laughs> As a provisional student. <laughs> As a provisional student. And if you get 16 credits and, and you carry a certain uh, GPA, we're gonna, we'll make you a permanent student. And, and, and it ultimately turned into becoming a permanent student. And, and you were a Dean's List student. I was a Dean's List student. So it was an incredible transformation. Like, a, we make some, some real uh, poor judgment decisions in our 20s. There's no question about <laughs> it. Um, and uh, ultimately, I made better on it, you know, because I, I never thought I would finish. Maybe the best thing that ever happened to me was getting injured, because without it, maybe I wouldn't have seen the light that I needed to do something a little different. There's this misperception that an online education is inferior in some way to a traditional college degree, and that it, it doesn't lead to the jobs that a traditional college degree uh, leads to. And your experience flies in the face of that. Oh no, no question. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think I'm an anomaly. I just think that there's there's a misconception out there. I mean, specifically, I had a job. I mean, my my degree is in energy and sustainability policy. I literally had a job, a very significant job, uh, that paid a great salary before I had my diploma in hand. And, and I think, now you're on your second job. And now I'm on my second <laughs> job with a significant salary increase, um, and, and both of which my education at Penn State was the uh, at the forefront of, of why I got the the, uh, the positions. What I love about the three people I've talked to today is, I don't know if our uh, associate producer knows this when he picked all of you, is that all three of you, your, your stories have come full circle because your work with the Interstate uh, Renewable Energy Council puts you in a position to evaluate uh, energy 
courses that, that other college students are taking to know, is this a valuable course? Is this going to lead to a job for someone down the road? A absolutely. I, th I think it's unique that now um, all colleges and universities in New York that, that have a renewable energy or energy efficiency coursework, you know, I, I'm actually sitting in on these courses and evaluating their content for, you know, uh, how well it translates into positions uh, in, the, in, the, in, the job, in the job sector. And uh, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty unique. And I, I think it's a neat experience to be able to be on the other side. So now the professors are, are nervous because of me. <laughs> <laughs> instead of me being nervous because of them. Well, what I, what I also love is that you are very jazzed about what you're doing. I mean, this isn't a job, this is a career, and a, and a family-sustaining career at that. Oh, no question. I, I think it even goes beyond the career thing. I mean, a, a lot of times when you look at your career path, you know, energy and sustainability policy, well, what does that really boil down to? Well, for me, it's I look at the four kids I have, and I'm like, well, Jeez, I have a responsibility to their generation to leave this planet in a better place than, than it was when I got here. And how do I do that? Well, the best way to do that is, is get involved with energy, which tends to be one of the drivers for, for a lot of pollution and, and you know, climate change and a lot of other things like that. So for me, being in, in, involved in, in an industry that, uh, that has a chance to make a difference for the next generation really means something to me. And it was a rigorous program. You did something in your course that I thought was wonderful that really sort of uh, uh, meant a lot to you in terms of um, demonstrating your your uh, citizenship, and that is, you wrote a letter uh, to the EPA uh, about one of their policies. I did. Um, I did. And so, as a result, you had to learn all about it. But also, you're, you're telling them this is what we expect of this public institution. That's right. They never wrote me back. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, it, it was it was good to make a public comment about what I thought you know on, on a particular policy and uh, you know I had some guidance from my from my uh, from my faculty the faculty at Penn State and uh, from my academic advisor and, and so it was it was a really unique experience they guided me along so I was you know helpful urging to them but also careful in what I said you know people I think wrongly assume that if you're a veteran that you get the financial aid you need through the GI Bill. And, and that really is, is not, not the case. Well, it, I mean, you, you get it, but it, it, it's often not enough for someone in a position like yours, a, a father with three children and a, and a fourth on the way. Yeah, it, well, it, you, you get the GI Bill. The problem is there's often a, a very long lag uh, between compensation and between when you, you earn your, your, uh, your entitlements. So it's, it's you know, it, just for instance, I, I had to add my newborn son to the VA, and it, it's like it's a year, it's a year plus on the waiting list. So it's, it, so the timing was was really an issue more than anything, and, and that's really where the scholarship came in and helped me out. What I think of is the untapped potential that's out there. There are more Todd Venetzes out there, who could do as well as you did, and oh, and sure. don't get the opportunity. Oh, for sure. No, there's no question. I mean, there's limited resources, and, and there's limited information about the resources that are out there. So, I mean, awareness is a big thing, and, and, and support for the people that, that really need it. You mentioned Benley McKinley, uh, Betty McKinley, and I, I think the interesting thing about that is that uh, people think that in online education you're isolated, it's not personal, and, and yet you are on a first-name basis with Brandy Robinson, who was the one who said you could apply for, the, uh, for this scholarship. That's right. And Betty McKinley, who went to bat for you in the admissions oh, office. No, no question. Um, Brandy Robinson's here tonight as, as my guest. So, um, yeah, I, I took so many courses that, uh, that although they were online, they, 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 they uh, were filled with plenty of students that are here on campus because they didn't fit the, the in-person schedule. So, I mean, and ultimately, I went to Costa Rica with a bunch of college students from, from University Park. And you know, I've had a, a really unique experience with Penn State, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, thanks for your time.